You're listening to the Call Kent podcast, where Kent C. Dodds answers questions and gives insights to software engineers like you. Now, let's hear the call. Hey Kent, it's Krasi from Bulgaria. Recently, I'm watching a lot of videos about performance in React. And in most of them, I'm noticing that people are talking about how many times your function or the functional component is actually fired. And the way of how they measure the performance is the number of the uh, executions of, of these functions, which means that if I put a console walk in one component, in, in if I see this console walk many times, then it means that I'm I'm doing something wrong and people start optimizing the state management and, and all of this. Um, I'm wondering what you think about, um, about the performance in general in, in React apps and the fact that, uh, from my point of view, what's really expensive if, is the is the DOM changes which React uh, performs on the actual DOM elements. Which means that if my DOM elements, which I return from my components, is the same, um, in theory, uh, everything should be fine. Um, I know that if um, if there are any like really heavy computation. Uh, maybe it's not really a good idea to fire your component many times, but um, in general, you know, I I feel that it, it should be fine, and it should be fine that you are seeing these re renders as long as the DOM elements are not changed, which means that the browser doesn't have to re render the whole page or part of it. Um, everything should be should be fine. And that was the call. Here's what Kent had to say. Samir, thank you so much for the question. So when it comes to performance, it's really just about uh, measuring and finding where the performance problem is. Like every uh, problem with performance is uh, has to do with the amount of code that you're running or how, how frequently you're running that code or whatever. Uh, and so the secret to making performance better is running less code. Um, that said, there are a lot of things that we do that are suboptimal um, that as part of web dev um, that are optimal enough. Um, so like there's a reason that we're not all just writing zeros and ones, and it's because um, while our performance could never be better uh, than just writing zeros and ones, uh, our developer experience could never be worse <laughs> if we were required to just write machine code all of the time. And so for that reason, uh, we build these abstractions and we uh, build these things that are uh, technically suboptimal um, because we're, uh, performance is not the only thing that we're concerned about as web developers. And so given that, um, it's what's most important is finding the thing that is uh, the actual performance bottleneck and solving that problem. And I would say that there are certainly times where unnecessary re-renders are the bottleneck, but in my uh, experience of using React since 2015, um, I have not once needed to use react.memo or pure component or any of that, or, or should component update. Um, I've not once needed to use those to solve a performance problem in a production application. Um, I definitely know that some people have and that that was an appropriate solution for them um, and what they were building. Like uh, if you have a massive data table or if you've got a um, uh, like a, a graph of some kind or something like that. Uh, or I know that in React Native, um, I am told I, I don't use React Native, but I'm told that uh, that context is uh, definitely a lot more challenging to make um, uh, perform well. And so, yeah, I'm not saying that there are <clears throat> situations where it's not useful, but in my experience, focusing purely on, uh, oh, this re-rendered and it wasn't necessary, uh, that is not um, the problem. Um, and, and so like memoizing all the components or something, that's not the best solution. I think this uh, attitude came from um, Redux, honestly, uh, people, would uh, say, oh, sweet, I don't have to pass props anymore. I can just stick it in this Redux thing, and now I've got my, my state anywhere that I want it, and it's awesome. And yeah, I can totally appreciate that, um, that it made the developer experience a little bit better. 
but at a pretty significant cost because anytime any state changes, every component re-renders. Now, yeah, that's a lot of unnecessary re-renders. And so in that case, you could say, okay, well, let's go and memoize all of our components and reduce uh, unnecessary re-renders. Or you could restructure your app in such a way that changing a single piece of state doesn't re-render all of your components. And so I think... Um, the unnecessary re-renders is a symptom of a larger problem, which is the structure of your app. So it, uh, I actually, I'll, I'll link to a blog post that I've got here. I, I have one blog post called Fix This Low Render Before You Fix the Re-Render that I'll link, and then another blog post on uh, the Epic React site um, about uh, uh, structuring your app and, and uh, doing it in such a way that uh, you reduce unnecessary re-renders and actually improve uh, the developer experience at the same time. So um, I'll link to both of those, um, but really like if you structure it in the way, in a compositional way, then you actually uh, don't really feel like you need to uh, pass props in all over, like a bunch of different places. So reaching for something like Redux or some other state management library is uh, much less appealing. And then on top of all of that, we have wonderful frameworks uh, these days. Remix is just fantastic. And um, you will be using state even less uh, in that uh, type of an application. Um, and so like performance problems are unlikely to be a problem for most people. You're totally right. Uh, re like the, the whole point of what React is doing is making it so we shouldn't have to care about these things. Um, the, the DOM is definitely the slow part of all of this, updating the DOM and React does a really good job of, of managing that. Um, I should say that the DOM has gotten faster since React was initially uh, released and, and so that's why a lot of libraries are uh, getting away with um, uh, doing things differently these days, but uh, even still React does a really good job of being uh, optimized and I, I don't personally have um, performance problems using React. Um, not, uh, not that aren't solved by uh, just uh, approaching things differently. Um, so yeah, um, it is fine to re-render. Um, it is absolutely fine to have unnecessary re-renders. Uh, React is optimized for that uh, particular scenario. And then if you structure your app in a, a compositional way, you'll have fewer unnecessary re-renders. Um, and actually, I'll, I'll link to a third blog post um, that it, it's it's kind of a clickbaity title, but it's like one simple trick to uh, optimize Rea your React component or something like that. Um, but basically, uh, React is really, really good if you um, at optimizing things if you uh, compose your UI in um, like a compositional way um, rather than just functions upon functions upon functions. Um, uh, so anyway, um, I will uh, show you uh, through those blog posts um, how all that works. And hopefully that is helpful uh, to you. Um, uh, oh, one other thing that I'll mention is uh, I think one reason why uh, people are um, hyper fixated on uh, reducing re-renders is because it's kind of an easy thing to measure. You stick a console log in there and you see how many times it logs and say, oh, that's a performance problem. Um, that could be a performance problem. It's not necessarily the case. You need to use the right tools to identify that. And so um, what uh, is harder to do, but even more correct, is to use the um, dev tools, uh, which has a performance tab and there's a way to run a profile. And then you do the thing that is slow and you look in that and see what part of my app is slow. And it might be that you're re-rendering too many things and that's where the React Dev tools can come in and show you what's being re-rendered. Oh man, there's so many things that are not necessary to be re-rendered, but again, that might not be a problem. Um, so yeah, look at the performance profile tab. That is more important. And I teach all about that in Epic React. There's a performance workshop uh, as part of Epic React as well. So definitely something to look into there too. Okay, I think that's everything. I will link to the relevant stuff and I hope you have a wonderful day. This has been the Call Kent podcast. Learn more about Kent at kentcdods.com and get your own questions answered at kentcdods.com slash calls.